All right, next projection we're going to do is a PA oblique step Y projection. This image is going to use a lengthwise cassette versus a crosswise cassette because now this image is looking at the full scapula along with the humeral um, head and about a third of the humeral body. The goal of this image in the end is to have your scapula look like a Y. The acromion and coracoid are going to be the arms of the Y and the body is going to be the leg and that should be superimposing that humeral body as the patient's position. Okay, so a lengthwise cassette versus a crosswise cassette because that is a longer body part than it is wider, like I explained last week in lab. If you're struggling when you're in lab to remember which way to turn your cassette, just think about the body part you're working on. If that body part's longer than it is wider, make a lengthwise cassette. If it's wider than it is longer, then it would be crosswise, okay? So I'm gonna have my patient come in facing towards the board and we are going to do the right shoulder today. So I'm going to get, the first thing that you should know, this rotation is 45 to 60 degrees and this image can be really hard for students when they're first starting out because it is such a big variance. Um, this is totally based on body habitus and I have a little trick that kind of can help you when you're first starting out with trying to perform this image. First thing you do is you want to take the humeral head, I like to make a cup with my hand and just cup that humeral head and turn the patient so that that humeral head is directly in the center of my bucky, okay? Because that's where my cassette is. From there, <clears throat> you can choose to either put the hand on the abdomen, <clears throat> excuse me, or rest it at the patient's side. I personally like the image done with the patient resting their arm at their side. That makes it more likely for my scapula to align with that humeral body really well. Um, but when you get out to clinical and you start taking images, you might prefer to do it with the hand on the abdomen. That's totally fine, okay? So once I have my arm positioned as I wanted to and I have my humeral head centered on the IR, I'm just going to hit my light field and you're feeling for the scapula. Sometimes it's kind of hard to feel for the scapula if you need to do, um, or if you need to be able to feel it a little bit better if the patient's able to. One thing you can have them do is roll the shoulder and that's going to pop that uh, scapula border out a little bit and that can usually help you identify where you need to work but you want to be able to feel the medial border and you want to be able to identify the inferior angle for sure. As long as you have an inch or so of light field above the top of the shoulder, you know that you'll be including the acromion and coracoid. But the thing that I see students most, do most frequently is they forget to check the base of the inferior angle and make sure that it's in your light field. A lot of the other projections that we do because they're crosswise in this section, people forget to bring their actual collimated field down and their cassette down to actually catch the whole image so they end up clipping that inferior angle. So make sure that you double check that you have at least an inch of light field below that inferior angle so that you're not clipping anything, okay? So once I have that and I can feel for my medial border, I'm just gonna start rotating my patient and then I'm gonna have her feet follow her to where she's going. Any way that your patient turns, you wanna have their feet in that same direction. If you don't, even just practicing at home, if you start turning to the side and you leave your feet going forward, your body is gonna just automatically start rotating back. So when you start walking away <clears throat> to go to expose your image, if you have a patient who is in the feet position of lateral or even PA for this image, and you have them facing a different direction, that's gonna make that patient automatically rotate back to that either PA or lateral position. And that's gonna unalign your scapula into that Y shape and you're going to have to redo it, okay? So I'm going to hold this shoulder, I'm going to put it right in the center of that IR, I'm going to turn my patient and what I'm trying to do is I'm turning this patient until this medial border is centered with the cup. So I always just call this a ball, I know that my finger is not a ball but it just helps for understanding and if you need to extend your light field longitudinally for a second so that you can see a little bit more of the light field up top Go ahead and do that, just remember before you expose to bring it back down to your 12 inches. But you make that cup and you can pull it up a little bit and put your pinky or even a pen or pencil, if you're using a pen or pencil, make sure there's a cap on it and don't use the, don't draw on your patients. But you can use anything, it's always good to use something that you always have available, you're always going to have your fingers with you, so that's always good to practice. But put that on that medial border and make sure that it's going to the center of the cup or the center of your CR. That's how it should end up aligned 
for the correct image as your medial border will be completely centered to the cup that you made with the humeral head and the center of your IR. If that's happening, you're going to get that pretty wide uh, position with the arms and the legs of the Y superimposing that humeral body. Okay? So again, 10 by 12 inch cassette. Patients rotated anywhere from 45 to 60 degrees, completely variant on the patient's body aptus and the way that they're built. Feel for that medial border and that inferior angle to make sure that everything is included. Cup that humeral head to get it centered in your uh, bucky and centered for the CR and cassette. Bring your medial border up right into the center of that little cup. And once you have that, just make sure your patient holds really still. You can go back and expose your image. Okay? From this projection, the PA oblique scap Y, you can also do another projection that's in this section that you guys are learning. So we're going to jump to that real quick now. If you're looking in your packet at the same as, time as watching this, I would turn to your lateral scapula projections. These projections are performed almost identical to your scap Y projection. The only difference is your hand placement. So you're still going to take your hand and do a little cup to get your humeral head in the center. You're still going to use your finger to make sure that that is good and centered. But now, depending on what area you're looking at of the scapula, you're going to put hands or your hand in two different positions. The first one is for the body of the scapula. For the body of the scapula, the patient's going to take the affected side. So in this position, it's her right side that's down, so her right scapula that's injured. And she's going to reach across her body and place her right arm on her left shoulder. Okay. This does change your rotation slightly because now you're going to be pulling the scapula forward. So double check and make sure when you feel that medial border that you're still aligned and make sure your humeral head is still aligned. And sometimes it's easier if you're having problems feeling the medial border. I'm going to have you put your hand out for one more second. If you're having a problem feeling the way that that moves, have your hand on the medial border when she reaches across or your patient reaches across because you'll feel that medial border and that shift of the scapula. Okay, This one's a little bit tougher than the next one will do because it pulls into the muscles and the rest of the body. It's really flush for most people. But other than that, the rest of your projection, and I'm going to turn her so it's going into the medial border, the rest of the projection is the same as your scapula. Okay, So just arm across the body, that looks at the body of the scapula. Go ahead and rest your arm down. That's kind of one little trick I like to tell people to think about because if they pull, if you guys pull, for example, the lateral scapula and you pull the body, people sometimes forget the arm position for the body of the scapula, arm across the body, body and body, okay? The other view that you can do is for the acromion coracoid in this position. It's the same exact setup as the scap Y, but now the affected arm, which again in this case is her right arm, is going to go back and the back of her hand is going to be against her back. So it's just going to bend at that little 90 there and rest on the back. And then again, this one's not nearly as bad because that motion actually pushes that medial border out, kind of like when you roll the shoulder. So if they're able to do this, you could do that too when you do your scap Y. If you wanted to feel that medial border, just make sure then when they rest their arm down, you follow where it goes again. But humeral head centered, medial border, aligned with the center of that bucky and cassette, and that is your lateral scapula for the acromion coracoid. Okay, so not much to that, just little minor changes in body position for the lateral scapula.